All right, Judy, you heard everyone, uh, Vanessa particularly, protesting that everyone should have seen this coming and the child was just one. If you've never been in the seat of trying to figure a case out, it's, I can see how in retrospect it looked obvious. Why do you think it wasn't flagged earlier? There are so many reasons for that, Dr. Drew. And first of all, she was going from hospital to hospital. So there were various hospitals uh, involved in this case. Also, most of the times, the practitioners also switch around. So whoever was seeing her, even at the same hospital, could have been different. Many of these right. hospitals are training hospitals, so there might be yep. interns seeing her, yep. residents seeing her. And they did take some steps, Dr. Drew. They did refer to Child Protective Services. Yep. They did refer to social services. Then Child Protective Services went to follow up and determined that it was okay for her to keep her son in her custody for the time being well, and just to keep watching her. So everybody tried to do what they could, but it's very hard, Dr. Drew, as you mentioned, to yes. really make sense of the situation when you're not consistent in that person's and, life. And, it's, and especially when you're a physician, you're trying to understand the biology, you may not really know the flags of a, of a proxy mm. Munchausen. And there was a really important tweet that came up alongside of Judy there. It said, if you know, make the point again that if you see something or you think someone's harming a child, say something something. It's more of the see something, say something. So what if you said too much? There it is. Please make the point to say people need to come forward if they think a child is in danger in any way. And Erica, mm -hmm. you and I were discussing the same thing in the elevator on the way up here, that there's something just weird about it that's hard to put our hands around tonight, but you can imagine yeah, what mean, it would have been I'm like trying to understand that case. Yeah, I mean, Munchausen's by proxy is definitely a unique you know, mental disorder. It's counterintuitive for a, what a parent is supposed to do with a child. But what I really do think that the ball was dropped here because the word Munchausen's by proxy was brought up within the first yes. year of this boy's life. And as well as the fact that she said she expressing that she wanted to harm the child. So the fact that it got to CPS, I think the ball was dropped there. It should have been followed up. It didn't matter where she went. They should have found out what was going on with that child. So it didn't get to the point where she literally killed him in the hospital, despite yeah. ongoing, very bizarre uh, medical things that were going on with him that didn't make sense. So I really think the ball was dropped on this. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm, at the I'm same time, I think she had a mental disorder. I don't, I'm, well, I think right. that she Something really else was also. in the grips of a mental disorder. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Erica. That's what the part we we're trying to get our hands around. And uh, again, we're, we're alleging, we're trying to understand, but there's something hard to understand about this. I'm glad you guys, the producers, put up what Munchausen by proxy is. We're discussing this. Everybody knows what it is. Basically, I think people know what Munchausen's disease is. People think they have all kinds of conditions or something called Brickett syndrome. Munchausen's where they go and get surgeries hand over fist. But this is where mothers and they act it out through the child. They lie about the symptoms, alter medical tests. Mm -hmm. They can even induce symptoms. And they almost kind of don't know they're doing it or they sort of it's a very yeah. strange case i i don't know how much of it people really are aware of when they're engaged in it and sam there's more to know about the biological father now isn't there yeah it's a really sad story dr drew so the man who has come forward claiming to be the boy's biological father he says that he just learned about his son's failing he health and death through a friend. So he actually shared a statement on her, the mother's Facebook page, also shared it on his own page. It reads, quote, this is my other son, Garnett, and he is five years old. I never get to see him because his mom just up and moved to New York. Well, Friday, he had some severe seizures that caused his brain to swell and now is brain dead and on life support. Even though I don't get to see him, I feel like he's been with me this whole time. I'm not going to lie. I cried for hours when I found this out and it will continue to hurt till the day I die. There's something interesting <laughs> And what he just said there, too, by the way, he's he's alleging or he's understanding that the, that the persistent seizures caused the brain swelling, not the brain swelling caused the seizures. So who knows what was going on or what the doctors were thinking in real time as this was going on, regardless of what it is. Leanne, I know you're always very gentle with parents that misbehave. So your <laughs> thoughts on this? Well, you know, Dr. Drew, I mean, as a new parent of a one year old myself, it just kills me. I was talking to my husband, Chris, about this the other night. We look at our child and I just say, I don't know how somebody can hurt their own flesh and blood. Like, I, the, the worst thing I want to do to my child is, like, eat him because he's so delicious, you know? So when I see things like this, it breaks my heart. But for me, Dr. Dew, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a libertarian, so I'm all about, like, you know, self-responsibility. But this woman needs to take her, her reproductive rights need to be taken away. I'm not a doctor. I don't know if she can be cured from this disease, but she does not have any right in the future to have another child.